Praise the Lord, everybody. And thank you so much for joining us here at Chosen by God Ministries. And tonight is our Bible study recap. And tonight we're going to be reviewing chapters one through eight. We're going to be reviewing chapters one through eight as we are now halfway through the book of First Corinthians. So just by a quick survey of chapters one through eight, we know that chapters one through four, Paul was dealing with the divisions that were in the Corinthian church. Chloe had written him a letter and saying, hey, Paul, we are having all of these issues and we need your help. Um, as you know, Paul founded that first Corinthian, he founded the Corinthian church. And as the founder, he had an obligation as their pastor to help them deal as they were growing and trying to mature in their Christian walk. So chapters one through four, he dealt with divisions in the church. Chapter one, he dealt with the divisions as they were claiming who they were following. Some said we're following Paul. Some said we're following Apollo. Some said we're following Peter. Some say, hey, I'm a, I'm, I'm a follower of Jesus Christ. And so Paul is saying to them, hey, doesn't matter who you're following. F following, this is the unity of the calling. We were all called into salvation. Um, and it's the same call that we all had to answer despite who was the person that preached the message that caused you to accept salvation? In chapter two, he talked about the unity of the message, which means all the message is the same. It may come out in different forms and different vari variation, but it's the same message that you must accept Jesus Christ as your savior. Then he talked about the role of the local church, the unity of the church, the unity of our purpose. And chapter four, he talked about the unity of the minister's role in the church. In chapters five and six, he begins to address moral flaws. Um, in chapter five, he talked about their sexual immorality and their um, prideful spirit that would allow them to um, accept behavior in the church that was against the teaching and that he was telling them they have to put that person out of the church and they will not be reconciled to the truth. And in chapter six, he talked about their prideful spirit and their immature spirit that allowed them to sue each other in church, that they were suing um, each other about spiritual things in front of non-spiritual judges. And he said, how can they judge spiritual things? And lastly, he talked about fornication and the need to keep our bodies holy unto God. In chapter seven, he talks about marriage. And he talks about whether you want to be single. And he talks about the principles of being single, which means you must stay holy. You must be abstinent. You, you give your life over to the Lord because you can serve him in his fullness. And then he wished that everyone could be single. But if you could be single, it's all right to be married. And we talked about some of the principles of marriage, where as being married, you must be married to a believer. And that if you are married and you get saved and your husband or your wife, your spouse is not a believer, then you cannot, you shouldn't leave them if they agree to stay with you because living with them, you could sanctify them. Your example and living with them could cause them to come to Christ. He also talked about in your service to God, if you are married, you have other considerations. You have a spouse, you have a family, you have other things to consider in your service to God. And therefore they have to take priority, but you can't neglect God for your family. You can't neglect your family for God. And that you have to seek him for the right balance when you have a family in your service to God. And so in chapter eight, we moved on to liberty. And the particular issue was whether we would eat meat that was made to idols. And Peter, I'm sorry, and Paul was talking to them about the law of knowledge and the law of love. And the law of knowledge says that we know that those meats that are offered to the idols, that's nothing to it because they're little G gods. It means absolutely nothing if we know that God is our provider and he provides for everything. However, the law of love says, if my eating of this meat offered to the idols offends my brother, my brother who is not quite mature to this same level of knowledge that I will not eat this meat. 
because the law of love then trumps the law of knowledge. All right, so those are chapters one through eight. And we want to share with you the quiz that we took um, as a class. It's online. And if you just bear with me for a few minutes because the quiz is timed. And so we're going to go to our quiz. And we'll see how well you can answer the questions. So this first quiz is chapters one through four. Question one, from whom did Paul know of the contentions in the Corinthian church? Apollos, Cephas, Christ, House of Chloe, or Priscilla and Aquila? It is the House of Chloe. Let me put this on full screen so you can see it. Great. Second question. Why was Paul glad that he had not personally baptized many Corinthians? A, he wanted to share the ministerial duties with his team. B, he only had one change of clothing. C, lest any should say that he baptized in his own name. D, all of the above. E, none of the above. And the answer is... Question three. How did most of the Greeks perceive the preaching of Christ crucified? Foolishness, a stumbling block, the power of wisdom of God, wonderful, E, none of the above. Did you get the right answer? <laughs> Foolishness. Question four. What has God chosen to confound the wise, the mighty, and the noble? Base things, despise things, foolish things, weak things, or E, all of the above. What do you think? Did you say E? And you got the right answer. Question five. Why did Paul come to them in humility and simplicity? A, because they would not have understood otherwise. B, he did not want to appear arrogant. C, that their faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. D, all of the above. Or E, none of the above. If you said C... And you have the right answer. Question six. What teaches us to know the things that are freely given us of God? A, the apostles. B, the spirit of God. C, the word of God. D, all of the above. E, none of the above. And the answer is B. Question seven. Oops, I passed. But the blank man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. Chapter two, verses 14. So is the blank uneducated, foolishness, ignorant, natural, or e? None of the above. If you said D, you must see the right answer. Let's do a few more. Question eight. What was the evidence of carnality in the Corinthian church? A, divisions. B, envying. C, strife. D, all of the above. Or E, none of the above. If you said D, that's the right answer. Question nine. I planted blank watered, but God gave the increase. Is the blank Apollos, Cephas, Christ, Paul, or E, none of the above? 
If you said Apollo, you have the right answer. Let's stop at question 10. To what does Paul liken the church? A, a building, a stone wall, branches, pearls of great price, or E, the tabernacle? If you said A, there's the right answer. We're going to stop and we'll post a link to this quiz so you can take um, the rest of it. All right, and we're going to do one more. And let's see, let's share our screen. And we're going to do the second version, which is chapters five to eight. Okay, so let's share our screen again. Let's see, we can pick up chapter. All right, we're going to pick up chapters five to eight now. And we're going to answer the first 10 questions. Question one. What was the attitude of the Corinthians toward the fornication in the church? Anger, puffed up, tolerance, D, all of the above, E, A, and B. Hmm. If you said B, you have the right answer. Question two. What things did Paul command the Corinthian church to do in relationship to the fornicator that was called a brother? Let me make sure it's full screen. A, put out of your fellowship the man who did this. B, hand this man over to Satan. C, don't keep company with anyone who calls himself a brother and is sexually immoral, greedy, a swindler, drunken or slanderous. D, expel him. E, all of the above. If you said E, you have the right answer. Let's go to questions three and four. Question three, what illustration is used to show that sin can spread if not dealt with? Leaven, mustard seed, weeds, all of the above, or E, none of the above. You said A, and you were right. Question four. What shows that Paul specifically referred to someone among the church and not someone of the world. And this is chapter 5, verses 10 through 11. Is it A, he names the man? Is it B, to avoid all immoral people, one would have to leave the world? C, the man is called a brother? D, all of the above? Or E, B, and C? If you said E, I have the right question. Questions five and six. What arguments does Paul use against church members going to court against each other? A, the saints will judge the world. B, the legal expenses saved could be used for the work of the Lord. C, we shall judge angels. D, all of the above, or E, A, and C. If you said E, A, and C, got the right answer. Question six. Who should be able to judge between brethren? Is it A, some wise men among them? B, the least of the brethren? C, the pastors? D, those in the church with some legal experience, or E, none of the above. Paul says, hey, some wise men among you. Let's go to question seven and eight. What other alternatives are there besides going to the law? A, 
go to another church. B, have a fight. C, take the wrong and suffering. D, all of the above. Or E, none of the above. If you said C, take the wrong and suffering, you have the right answer. Question eight. What phrase shows that persons who are guilty of gross immoral sins can be forgiven and set free? A, all have sinned. B, Christ Jesus came in the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. C, he that is without sin, let him cast the first stone. D, such were some of you. And E, None of the above. If you said D, then you have the right answer. Let's do our last two questions. Question nine. Why may it not be wise to do some things even though they are lawful? A, avoid all appearance of evil. B, it may not be expedient. C, it may set a bad example. D, all of the above. Or E, none of the above. If you chose B, you chose the right answer. Question 10. What short imperative does Paul give regarding sexual immorality? A, Avoid all appearance of evil. B, flee fornication. C, flee youthful lusts. D, make no provision for the flesh. Or E, pray without ceasing. According to Acts 6 and 18, if you said B, then you have the right answer. Great. All righty, we're going to stop there at question 10, and, and we will share in the polls a link to both of those um, quizzes, because there's 20 questions in each one. It's time, and it's a great way to review chapters 1 through 8. We had a wonderful time in class taking those quizzes, and also gives you the scripture reference if there's any debate as to what the right answer is. So we thank you so much for joining us for this review. If you would like to uh, sow a seed in the ministry on today, you can do so by going to dollar sign and cash app. Cash app is dollar sign chosen by God men or Givelify, which is chosen by God ministries or PayPal, which is chosen by God men at gmail.com. Please sow a seed in the ministry to help us continue to spread the word of God. If you have any prayer requests, please feel free to leave those prayer requests in the comments or in our email, which is chosen by God men at gmail.com. And we will add you to our prayer list and lift you up in prayer um, to the Lord. Amen. Because this is praying time. So let's pray and we hope you can join us again. Kind Father, Lord, thank you again for this day and for this time. And we thank you for this Bible study. We thank you for those who will join and who will watch and who will enjoy the reviewing of your word. God, help us to be not just hearers, but doers of your word. Help us to hide your word in our heart that we might not sin against you. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen. And we'll see you next time. Be blessed.